In this video, we will be addressing construction and demolition, or CND, waste management in the neighborhood of Edgewater in Chicago. Here we will outline the necessity of CND management in the community, the current rules and regulations in place, problems and solutions to CND waste, and an overall policy suggestion that can be in place in the neighborhood. The neighborhood of Edgewater is a diverse, densely populated lakefront community on the north side of Chicago. With the addition of a variety of new businesses, apartments, and school buildings joining this growing community, there is an expanding need for new construction. With 45.5% of houses in Edgewater built before 1940, many of these older buildings were made using high-quality materials that can be reused and add to the historic value of Edgewater. With new construction, demolition, and restoration comes the addition of construction and demolition waste. Much of this waste is simply dumped into landfills, diminishing limited landfill space with massive amounts of material. This not only exhausts building materials and the resources it takes to make them, but also increases soil and water contamination, GHG output, and overall environmental degradation from landfills. Therefore, it is incredibly important to implement methods and policy in order to minimize construction and demolition waste, as well as safely and sustainably recycle and dispose of what waste is made. So what is construction and demolition waste? CND waste can include things such as concrete, wood, asphalt, gypsum, metals, bricks, glass, plastics, and many other materials. These can be generated from various methods including demolition, excavation, site work, renovation, road work, and civil building projects. All of this contributed to an EPA estimated 600 million tons of construction and demolition debris generated in the United States alone in 2018. Now let's move on to the regulations in place. Construction and demolition waste is generally left to states to regulate, with the only major federal regulation overseeing it being the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, which provides a general framework for the proper management for hazardous and non-hazardous solid waste. Rules applied in the City of Chicago include making contractors track the number of debris generated on project sites, submitting a recycling compliance form to the Department of Public Health at the end of each project, and recycling at least 50% of recyclable debris that is generated at the site. If these regulations are not followed, the contractor will be fined by the city. While Chicago is one of the first cities in the Midwest to create construction and demolition ordinances requiring sites to recycle, these regulations haven't been updated since 2007 and in many cases are not properly monitored. So what is the biggest problem with construction and demolition waste management? A 2016 study analyzing construction waste management stated that limitations associated with poor participation in CD waste management and minimization were as follows. Absence of a coordinator for CD management plan, passive participation of all stakeholders in CD waste management and minimization plan, lack of communication among project participants, lack of coordination and review meetings, and broken CD waste management plans. Consequentially, one of the easiest and cheapest ways to improve this is proper management, communication, and monitoring of construction and demolition waste, improper design and design communication, poor planning, and unexpected design changes are one of the main causes of construction waste generation, on average increasing the volume of construction waste by 33%. It is possible to effectively reduce the number of design changes by improving communication among project participants and design quality of the project. Various methods of improving design quality for sustainability include prefabrication, utilizing deconstruction, and using recycled material. This is especially important when looking at Edgewater. As mentioned before, nearly half of Edgewater's buildings were built before 1940. With these older buildings comes the addition of high-quality materials such as rare hardwoods, brick, and stone. And as the price of lumber and other materials increase, this can save builders a lot of money. Strategic deconstruction can work to save much of these materials. Many of these buildings also feature amazing artisanship and add to the historic value of Edgewater. Therefore, the option of restoring the buildings also presents itself as a sustainable and valuable choice. Organizations like the Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse, which promotes the reduction of waste in landfills through sustainable deconstruction and renovation building practices, as well as the Edgewater Historical Society, are both great organizations to involve in the process of maintaining, restoring, and reusing materials and history of Edgewater. Also, there are a variety of green building guidelines like LEED and BREAM, which help to reduce waste as they include credits for waste minimization and material recycling to reduce environmental impact. Now, let's look at what type of policy can be implemented in Edgewater. One of the most effective ways to start addressing these issues would be to require a site waste management plan. A site waste management plan's purpose is to reduce waste produced by construction sites through detailing how building materials and any resulting waste will be managed during a project, 
how much of it will be made, and how these materials can be reduced, reused, and recycled. In a site waste management plan, you can also create specifications that detail C&D waste requirements, on-site separation details if separating on-site, and minimum requirements for the use of recycled content in construction. The plan will be updated during the construction process to record any changes, as well as keep track of materials. For the purpose of this video, we will simplify a site waste management plan into three phases, pre-design, schematic design, and construction. In the pre-design phase, you can use the site waste management plan to create waste reduction goals and decide if you can do things like design for reconstruction or use prefabricated, recycled, or repurposed materials. You should also survey the site to see if you can reuse building components or adapt the building altogether. Here is where the neighborhood of Edgewater could require specific percentage goals for recycled content reclaimed materials, and waste. During this phase, you should ask questions like, how can we use our assets more efficiently, and what is the life cycle of the material we are using? Then, during the schematic design process, you can hold a collaborative meeting involving all parties in open communication to allow for creative solutions for waste reduction and optimization of material use. Make sure dimensions, grids, floor heights, and etc. are all coordinated to avoid waste of material through the change in design and find ways to standardize building methods to increase efficiency. And finally, during the construction process, you monitor, record, and update the plan to ensure that procedures on the construction site are properly facilitating any plans for waste recycling and sorting, as well as following any sustainability guidelines set in pre-design and schematic phases. Overall, the money spent on materials contributes to about 50 to 60% of a construction project's costs. Thus, any reduction in waste generation leads to major cost savings. Implementing and monitoring site waste management plans in the Edgewater community will help not only create a greener Edgewater by reducing GHG emissions, minimizing soil and water contamination, and putting less waste in landfills, but also greatly lower construction costs.